Welcome back. Some very interesting dynamics are happening right now to the U.S. housing market. This is based on my nerdy analysis of the latest data we have from Realtor.com regarding asking prices, housing inventory, price reductions, and much, much more. Um, just like my vi previous videos, I'll provide a summary at the end of this video as well to give you some of my insights regarding what this data actually means and also kind of recap regarding what happened to our housing market over the past couple of weeks. So here's the article from Realtor.com just posted um, last Thursday, I believe, on September 26. But you guys know I don't even read that. Instead, go to, uh, what is this, Realtor.com slash research slash data. I will provide a link in the video description below though. So click on weekly inventory and then click on that link right there. It takes you more or less to this information. So let's talk about asking prices. And this um, covers the week ended September 21st. The data here looks at the changes compared to one year ago. So asking prices decreased by 1% compared to 12 months ago. This marks the 14th consecutive week in which asking prices are down from 12 months ago. Asking prices are negative because inventory is much higher compared to last year. And of course, home sales are still at relatively low levels as well. In my opinion, home sales will not improve unless rates and or home prices decrease further. And by the way, forward-looking indicators regarding future home sales, that's based on pending home sales, and of course, application numbers as well, people applying for a loan to buy a house, um, are still at relatively low levels as well, which all implies we're gonna see this you know, stagnation of home sales for the remainder of the year. All right, let's change gears slightly here and talk about house inventory numbers, the amount of houses for sale compared to 12 months ago. Only looking at existing houses, the resale market, excluding brand new home construction or brand new houses. So last week that rose by 33.2%. So now inventory is higher compared to the previous year for the past 46 consecutive weeks. So inventory higher compared to the previous 12 month period um, ever since really mid-November this year. The good news is, um, for home buyers, of course, is that, of course, we have more inventory. This means you have more negotiating power as well. And this, of course, is especially true in areas that have a glut of um, housing inventory, such as parts of Texas and Florida, for example. Also, as my note says right there, um, just kind of providing my own boots on the ground experience of being an agent here in the greater Sacramento area, uh, a client of mine just got their offer accepted about one week ago. Um, they had the seller pay off the solar system, and the solar system payoff is around forty to forty-five thousand dollars that the seller is paying. So basically, my client's going to be taking a or buying a house in which the solar is paid off. Uh, normally, especially in two thousand twenty through early two thousand twenty-two, that was basically unheard of. Um, the uh, buyer um, normally would take over the seller's payments or their lease. Entirely abnormal to see the seller actually paying off uh, the solar panels. But this is a different market today, right? Because of more inventory that we're seeing in the greater Sacramento area, and of course, nationwide as well, uh, home buyers have more negotiating power. So on top of this seller paying off the solar panels, they're also giving my client a $10,000 closing cost credit. This means their out-of-pocket expenses of buying the house just decreased by $10,000. Again, unheard of compared to the craziness of 2020 through early 2022. Let's also discuss the bad news for home buyers uh, right now, though. So it's great to see that have we approximately, what, 33% more homes for sale, but the growth rate has been stagnant for the past four and a half months. It has been paid at around a gain of 33 to 38% ever since May this year. Also, the 33% gain we saw last week was one of the smallest increases we've seen since the four weeks ended or the week ended April 20th this year. So here's the key takeaway. Inventory growth has been stagnant mainly from a low amount of houses being listed for sale. So new listings have been rising by only single digits for quite some time. Before that, we saw double-digit gains of new supply in the market um, to basically start the year. I'll share more of that regarding uh, new supply in the market or new listings here in a little bit. But let's first talk about my own analysis of AltusResearch.com's latest data 
regarding inventory levels. So one year ago, we had approximately 534,000 existing houses for sale. Uh, and now we have approximately 731,000. So approximately 196,000 more homes for sale compared to 12 months ago. That is an increase of 37% year over year. But just like Realtor.com's data suggests, this also has been kind of stagnant as well, it has been hovering around a gain of around 38% ever since May this year. So inventory has been rising at the same rate as last year ever since May this year. So we're up by about 37%, but the growth rate is, bas is basically moving in line with last year's levels. So in other words, the growth rate is flat year over year. In other words, not increasing uh, like we once saw to start the year. In addition to that, there's approximately 232,000 more houses for sale right now compared to the start of this year, uh, based on data from Altos. Compare that to a gain, uh, and that by the way, was a 46% increase so far this year. So January through, uh, when is this, late September, uh, inventory is up by 46%. Compare that to the same time frame last year, it only increased by 13%. So therefore, inventory growth is, overall for the year is growing much faster compared to last year. It's also rising much faster compared to pre-COVID levels. So for example, housing inventory rose on average by 16% from January through August in 2017 through 2019. Compare that to a gain of around 37% so far this year. Again, that's the same time frame, January through August, looking at data from Realtor.com. However, though, the increase this year is much less than the same time frame in 2022. So January through August of 2022, inventory more than doubled, or it was almost doubled, a gain of around 93%, whereas this year it increased by only 37%. This, my friends, is why I do not expect to see a sharp correction in um, home sales and, of course, a decrease in home prices year over year like we saw in 2022. However, home price growth should soften, though, due to four main reasons. Number one, the decrease of asking prices of houses for sale, as I share with you guys. Number two, more inventory levels or more houses for sale. Number three, seasonality, because our housing market tends to wind down in the winter months. And lastly, number four, sluggish home sales. Of course, let's keep an eye on this in the coming months, and I'll definitely keep posted with a, any new developments. To summarize, inventory is rising more than twice as fast as pre-COVID levels, but not rising nearly as fast as 2022. Also, comparing inventory levels um, this week compared to the same time frame in 2019, we have approximately 22% fewer homes for sale right now. So why is inventory not skyrocketing? And the answer really is this right here. So new listings rose by 8% um, compared to 12 months ago. This marks the fifth straight week of year of year gains, but again, only rising by single digits, less than 10%. For the most part, since May, new listings have increased from the previous year by less than 10%. In contrast, they rose by over 10% from February through April this year. Therefore, the growth rate of new supply hitting the market has stalled, causing housing inventory growth to also stall as well. Let me share this kind of scenario regarding um, new listings kind of losing momentum. And here's a really good chart looking at um, that on uh, Redfin's data center. So to start the year, and by the way, the orange line of course is this year, last year is uh, the blue line below. So the start of the year, we were up by 10.8%. So uh, around what, 11% more new listings compared to the same time frame in 2023. We kind of lost some momentum in January, but then it picked up again in February, rising by double digits through more or less until we hit basically uh, May. So new listings were rising by about 10 per, or over 10% uh, to start the year. But ever since then, new listings have basically been um, in kind of stagnation mode, rising by less than 10%. Excluding these uh, past couple of weeks here, in which new supply is rising faster than last year's levels. But overall, uh, for the year as a whole, inventory was, or I should say, new listings were rising by more or less double digits to for the first uh, few months of the year, but ever since then, rising by less than 10%, which is causing um, housing supply 
to rise um, by uh, lower levels uh, ever since the spring, spring months this year. All right, changing gears slightly here to talk about how fast or how slow houses are selling right now. So last week, which is the week ended September 21st, it took six days longer to sell a home compared to one year ago. This marks the 20th consecutive week in which homes are taking longer sell compared to the previous year. This is much different compared to October last year through March this year when homes were selling faster compared to the previous year. Here's the impact to our housing market. As houses take longer to sell, they're sitting on the market longer, that all contributes to the rise of housing inventory, especially when sales remain very low as well. Of course, housing supply or housing inventory would rise much faster if new supply in the market or new listings were rising by more than 10%. So in other words, the uh, single data gains of new listings has basically kind of been um, causing the growth rate of inventory levels to remain at low levels right now. All right, let's also talk about the increase in the number of reduced price listings uh, nationwide. Uh, last week, that rose by 29.6%. Therefore, the number of price drops has been higher compared to last year for the past 35 consecutive weeks. However, even though there's more price drops um, this year compared to last year, the gain of 29.6% we saw last week is the second smallest increase since the end of March this year. Let's take a look at um, altosresearch.com looking at the share of reduced price listings. So for the week ended September 27th, um, overall on a national level, the share is at 39%. This means that four at very 10 homes for sale nationwide have reduced their asking price. Here's the difference though, because for the past several weeks now, ever since really, when was this? July 26. So the past two consecutive months, uh, the uh, share of price drops has basically been stagnant at around 39%. This is higher compared to last year at 37%, but lower than the same time frame in 2022, when back then the share was at 42%. Also, the big difference um, in 22 compared to this year, the trough was at 17%. And by the time we hit that time in 2022, or this time in 22, it increased to 41%. So share price drops more than doubling uh, compared to the trough, whereas this year we went from 30% to 39%. So a small gain of around nine percentage points from the trough this year, which was basically in February. So big takeaway regarding that is that we're not seeing the shock of a housing market in which price drops were doubling, inventory was doubling, mortgage rates were doubling, um, so we're not seeing this um, shock regarding the housing market like we saw uh, during that time in 2022. But again, keep in mind, overall, comparing the median sale price in 2022 compared to the calendar year of 2021, home prices still increased even though rates doubled, mortgage rates doubled, and of course, a, a share of price shops also doubled as well. So again, that's one of the reasons why I do not expect to see home prices decrease um, greatly this year. Um, we have some challenges, especially regarding housing affordability, but we're not seeing this shock and awe like we saw in 2022. Having said that, you know, it's not perfect right now, of course. <laughs> There's a lot of challenges at 39%, higher than last year, a little bit lower than uh, 22, but at 39%, much higher compared to 21, 2020, as well as pre COVID uh, back in um, early October 2019. The share was at approximately 37%. And right now we're at 39%. All right, I wanna share a summary with you guys because of course that was a lot of information to, to kind of digest. So number one, asking prices have been down year over year for the past 14 consecutive weeks. This is from a significant rise of housing supply. More sellers have to compete against each other, which is causing asking prices to decrease and the decline of asking prices can be tied to the sharp run-up in home prices over the past several years, which is keeping home buyers on the sidelines due to housing affordability constraints. Number two, housing inventory increased by 33% last week, but the growth rate has basically been stagnant for the past four and a half months, um, paid at around 33 to 38% ever since May of this year. Also, the gain of 33% um, that we saw last week was one of the smallest gains we've seen since late April this year. 
In my opinion, inventory gains are losing momentum from a slowdown in the number of new listings hitting the market. However, there's still approximately 22% fewer homes for sale right now compared to the same time frame in 2019. Real estate is local though, right? Because as of August, looking at data from Realtor.com, thanks to some analytics from ResiClubAnalytics.com, uh, there's four states that have more existing homes for sale this August compared to August of 2019. Those four states are Texas, 8% more homes for sale from 2019. Idaho is up by 9%. Florida, a gain of 6%. And Tennessee is up by 5%. There's also four more states that are not too far behind as well. So I'm actually really curious once they release uh, September's numbers, I think potentially later this week. So for example, Washington, Utah, Colorado, and Arizona have approximately one to 2% fewer houses for sale this August compared to August of 2019. Of course, this is um, noteworthy because areas that have more inventory uh, this year compared to pre-COVID are areas in which home price growth are slowing down the most or home prices are decreasing outright. Number three, of course, we know that a majority of homeowners have rates far below current rates today. So for example, this has been limiting the amount of new supply in the market. Uh, in other words, we're not seeing for selling right now, at least not at, on a large scale. Because of course, people have a two and a half to three and a half percent rate. You know, why would they sell and buy a new house? Because rates today are in the low sixes. So this is all limiting um, home sales and transactions overall. I'm not saying that, you know, sales are stalling out altogether. Everyone has the reasons for buying. They're renting in a small apartment, for example. They have a growing family, job relocation, divorce, a death, etc. cetera. Um, everyone has their own choices regarding um, if it's right for them to move or not. But in any case, because of this dynamic of regarding this kind of like golden handcuffs that home buyer or home owners have right now, uh, this is causing new listings to rise by only single digits. And like I mentioned in, in weeks past and months past, I do not expect to see a giant surge of new supply hitting the market in less unemployment spikes. In other words, I do not expect to see a, a you know, sharp increase of new listings unless we start seeing forced selling on a large scale. And speaking of that as well, on Friday, we have a big jobs report for the month of September, and that will um, list um, how many jobs um, were added, uh, non-farm payroll uh, jobs were added. And on top of that, they will also announce the unemployment rate for September as well. Um, based on that report on Friday, that could uh, change uh, the direction of mortgage rates greatly. So keep an eye on that because a lot could change regarding uh, the data we're seeing today based on that report that's going to be announced on Friday morning. Um, also, let's go ahead and kind of move on here. Number four, the share of price reductions is no longer at a five-year high during the same time frame because, again, like I shared, um, the share of price drops right now is below 2022's peak. Um, also, in a span of six months in 2022, like I mentioned, the share price drops um, more than doubled. This year, a small gain up um, from 30% to 39%. Number five, last week, houses on average took about six days longer to sell. Also, homes have been sitting on the market longer, taking longer to sell for the past 20 consecutive weeks. As homes have been taking longer to sell, this has contributed to the rise of housing supply. But wait, there's more. Number one, let's talk about rates because I um, haven't really talked about that so much on today's video. So the average 30-year fixed rate um, is very close to a one and a half year low. Uh, more or less the lowest rates we've had going back to February of 2023. Well, it's very close to that. Um, on top of that, housing affordability has improved due to this decreasing in, in, or decrease in rates, but it remains an issue mainly from elevated home prices and of course, in some areas, um, uh, giant increases of home insurance rates, such as parts of Texas and Florida, for example. So housing affordability constraints can be seen by the record low level or near record low level of pending home sales in August, according to NAR or the National Association of Realtors. So looking at data from um, August regarding a measure of contracts being signed between buyers and sellers, of existing houses, that's pending home sales, for the month of August is actually lower than the Great Recession, um, more or less the lowest levels 
except for the previous month, which was July. And their data, by the way, goes back to 2001. So this is uh, really kind of telling us or telling me that we have a lack of contracts being signed on a national level. And therefore, we're going to see a, you know, a small amount of close home sales in the coming months because of that. All right, moving on. Number two, the most recent stats we have from the MBA showing mortgage purchase applications that actually increased for the first time, I think in years, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's the first time in years in which application numbers increased compared to the previous year. It is a small gain though, up by only 2%. That's for the week ended September 20th this year. I believe, again, like I mentioned, this is the first time in years in which applications rose from one year ago. Also, uh, NAR reported that pending home sales for existing houses decreased by 3% um, year over year, and basically the second lowest reading on record going back to 2001. Absolutely insane. So in contrast, new home construction or sales from that based on a contract being signed between, between a builder and a home buyer that actually increased by a whopping 9.8% this August compared to August last year. So the resale market is very close to all-time record lows, down by 3%, yet um, home sales for brand new houses rose by nearly 10% during the same time frame. Home builders are still facing headwinds though because they have approximately the same number of homes for sale right now as they did in 2008. Number three, looking forward for the nation as a whole, asking prices are down, inventory has been increasing, homes are sitting on the market longer, and price reductions are more common now than they were in 2019. We have been moving towards a buyer's market, not any buyer's market on a national level, but towards one. Uh, but every house market's different, right? Inventory in California and the Northeast part of the United States um, have um, you know, a lot fewer homes for sale than 2019. Obviously much different than Texas, Idaho, Florida, and Tennessee that have more homes for sale than 2019. Number four, the most important one, if you guys are still watching today's video, here's a virtual high five. I appreciate you guys so much. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Have an amazing day and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.